Hi, my name is Robin Wong and in this video I want to talk about the JPEG in Olympus cameras. Let's do this. I will start by addressing why the camera JPEG is important even if you are a raw shooter. Also, I want to talk about the superiority of Olympus JPEG in comparison to other cameras out there. And finally, I will share tips and tricks on how to optimize the JPEG settings in your Olympus cameras. I know a lot of photographers will say that if you are truly serious about photography, you will definitely shoot RAW. I don't disagree with that, I am a RAW shooter myself, but this is not a JPEG versus RAW argument. And even if you are a RAW shooter like myself, please don't dismiss the camera's JPEG so quickly. Understanding how the camera JPEG work will make you a better photographer. Here is the reason why. What you see on the camera's electronic viewfinder and the LCD screen, before and after you press the shutter button, you are seeing the JPEG preview even if you shoot RAW. When you compose through the electronic viewfinder as you make camera adjustments, what you see is what you get. That is JPEG preview happening. You are seeing the camera's JPEG. And after you've taken an image, the camera will show you a preview. The camera is showing you JPEG. So understanding JPEG and how it works is definitely beneficial in your photography workflow. One of the things that I shoot as a professional photographer is event coverage. Some clients will demand the photographs immediately after shoot for social media posting or press release purposes. I don't have the time to transfer the images from the camera to my laptop and post process the raw files. That will take too much time. This is when JPEG comes in really handy for speedy delivery. Also, if you are very new to photography, you just got your first camera, you don't know what the exposure basics of the camera is and you have learning about composition, lighting, adding post-processing, shooting raw into your plate will be a little bit overwhelming. There are a million sliders in a post-processing software. So keep it simple. Post-processing can come in a little bit later. Being an Olympus shooter, I'm very proud to say that Olympus JPEG is one of the best, if not the best out there. And here are the reasons why Olympus JPEG is superior. Number one, fine detail processing. This feature was introduced in Olympus E5. It is a DSLR many years ago, even before the birth of Micro Four Thirds system. In fine detail processing, Olympus employs a very, very thin anti-alias filter. Now, I'm not entirely sure if it's a very thin filter or if there's no anti-aliasing filter at all in front of the image sensor. The reason they do this is to optimize per pixel sharpness. Fine detail processing is applicable to both JPEG and RAW. If you shoot RAW, you also get the full benefit of per pixel sharpness. However, Olympus goes one step further in the JPEG processing, having a smart algorithm to analyze for moiré. Moiré is false color pattern, and the JPEG will automatically correct any moiré that is found in the image. Number two, adaptive lens sharpening. When different lens is attached on the Olympus camera body, the camera will apply different JPEG sharpening on the image. Say if you're using a 14 to 42 kit lens, it is not as sharp as say the 75 f1.8 lens. So the camera will apply more aggressive sharpening on the images taken with the 14 to 42, and it will apply less sharpening for the images taken with the 75 f1.8. Number three, diffraction compensation. As you narrow down the aperture from f5.6 to f8 and f11 or beyond, the camera will suffer loss of sharpness due to lens diffraction. The JPEG engine will be smart enough to apply variable sharpening, increasing the sharpness to match the loss of diffraction. Number four, technical lens flow control. This is not a feature that is exclusive to Olympus, but Olympus was the first 
to implement this in their cameras. Any lens that is attached to the camera body will exhibit certain flaws, such as chromatic aberration, distortion, corner softness, and vignetting. Based on the lens that is attached, the camera will determine which profile to apply to the correction, and all these flaws will be effectively corrected in the camera's software processing, giving you an optimized JPEG output. And finally, number five, accurate color reproduction. This is subjective. I know some people prefer the film simulation effect or they'll post-process the images to look completely different after post-processing versus what I've seen in reality. Now, I am a professional photographer. Color accuracy is extremely important to me. Say one day I'm lucky enough to have Ferrari as my client. When I'm shooting Ferrari, the red color is their signature. I cannot just apply some funky film simulation or tweak the red colors in my post-processing. I have to capture that signature red faithfully because if I fail to do just that, the client will just go to another photographer. Now, I understand that some people, they'll prefer to shoot the colors their way. That's perfectly fine. But at least when you are shooting out there, when you're seeing through the camera's viewfinder and the LCD screen, I want the colors to represent reality. I want the colors to come close to what I see in real life as close as possible. And Olympus JPEG preview on the LCD screen and the EVF does just that. Moving along, here are some tips on how you can optimize your JPEG in Olympus cameras if you are a JPEG shooter. Tip number one, large superfine. Enable large superfine to get the best possible JPEG result from an Olympus camera. If you're shooting EM1 Mark III, EM5 Mark III, and the EM1X, large superfine can be activated from the super control panel. You just have to press OK, and it is down here. You can choose RAW or JPEG. If you're shooting JPEG, choose large superfine. It is the best or you can shoot RAW plus large superfine JPEG as well. I'm gonna leave it to large superfine here. If you're using an older Olympus camera such as EM1, EM1 Mark II, EM5 Mark II, Pan F, then the large superfine setting is hidden. Don't worry, you have to go to menu under the cogs, go to G, and you'll find this set triangular thing here. It says modifying JPEG record modes, right? Go in and you can manually select large and super fine. Once you're done, just press OK. Once this is already set, when you access the super control panel, large super fine should appear here. Tip number two noise filter off or low. Now, to find noise filter, go to menu, under the cogs, go to E, and from E1, you see noise filter, change it to off or low. I'll leave it to off. If you are very allergic to noise, you see a little tiny grain of noise, your skin will crawl, then I advise you to set to low. Try to avoid noise filter standard or high. This will apply very aggressive noise filter to your image. It will look mushy, it will look a little bit painterly. I'll typically leave it to off for all my review purposes you've seen on my blog and as well as this video. But if you are very scared of noise, you can leave it to low. Tip number three. For picture profile, I generally shoot with natural. You can change your picture profile here in the super control panel. Feel free to experiment with other modes like Eye Enhance or Vivid. I don't shoot with Eye Enhance or Vivid because they're generally oversaturated and they add too much contrast to the image. They look unnatural and they'll make the skin tone look very red like tomatoes. I generally shoot in natural. Sometimes I shoot in portrait. It generally makes the skin a little bit more flattering. But usually for 90% to 95% of my JPEG shooting or even when I shoot RAW in my JPEG, JPEG preview, I set my camera to natural. Tip number four, the camera's sharpness, contrast, and saturation settings. It is just here. 
you see these buttons, uh, you don't know what they stand for. The camera can be a little bit mysterious. Don't worry. I advise you to just press it from the super control panel. You see this is sharpness. You go to the next one, you don't know what this half moon icon is. Press it, it is contrast. And then you see what this tree circle thing down here. I don't really know what this symbol is. Don't worry, if you don't know what it is, just press it. This is saturation. So for contrast, sharpness, and saturation, I leave them all zero, 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 zero. Feel free to experiment if you want to customize more sharpness or less sharpness, or if you want more contrast in your image, or you want less contrast, or if you want more saturation, feel free to play around with it. But if you ask, hey Robin, what do you recommend? What do you think is the best for Olympus JPEG? I'd say zero, zero, zero. I have shot hundreds of thousands of photographs from Olympus cameras over the years believe me this is the best setting tip number five gradation normal now gradation setting can be activated here right at the edge gradation don't play with high or low these are high key and low key shooting it will mess up with your metering just play with normal or auto the difference between normal and auto is that when you change to auto the camera will artificially brighten the darker parts of the image they're trying to give you that pseudo hdr look it leaves the shadow artificially I don't trust the way the camera manages the shadow. I typically leave it to normal. Normal will give you a more natural looking result. Auto will somehow make the photograph look a little bit fake. And finally, auto white balance fine adjustment. I typically shoot with auto white balance. I find that the camera's auto white balance engine to be very, very reliable. However, you also have an option to further fine adjust the white balance. You have A and G, A for amber, G for green. You can further use these settings to achieve the perfect white balance that you intended. Now, a is amber, it is very useful to fine tune situations where it's too warm or too cold, especially shooting in tungsten or very warm lighting condition. Or you can go to G, the green, this is very useful to get rid of magenta cast or green cast in your image. Typically this situation will happen if you shoot a lot in fluorescent or LED lighting situations. If you don't need to fine tune anything, just leave it to zero. The auto white balance will usually do its job, but I find that sometimes A and G can make a bit of a difference if you go in and do some adjustment. That's all I have to share in this video. If you found any of the sharing useful, if you've learned something new, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. Any small contribution can go a long way to keep me alive and also to keep this channel going. The links are in the descriptions below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll do my best to produce more similar content coming this way. Until the next one, please stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.